I'm here at the UCLA Baja Teams workshop with Rama. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. Uh, what's your role on the team? So I'm the co-technical director of Brun Racing Baja. Okay. And what does that role entail? So that role entails mostly deciding the high-level design of the vehicle. Um, we basically set the goals that we want at competition, um, and then we work down from there and try to assign each sub-team on the team um, a specific goal for their sub-team to hit for the year. So this is our shop. We are one of three uh, Bruin Racing teams under like who work here because we're all under the Bruin Racing umbrella. There's us, there's Formula, and then we also have our Super Mileage team. Um, so we have this middle kind of section. Um, we have some workspaces. Ignore the chaos that is our fastener organization. <laughs> um, and we have a lot of our electronics is right there in that cart. Um, we have more work tables, more electronic set tables over here, um, just because we do have to isolate that from some of our um, metal work mm -hmm. for the sake of pretty. And then how important is organization for the team? So important. I can't count the number of times where I'll be packing for like one of our drive days where we go out. Um, that's also kind of under my purview is organizing testing days, drive days, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll be doing like kind of the general tools packing the night before, and I'll go into our drill thing right there, and there will be no drills. And I'm like, guys, <laughs> where are the drills? <laughs> um, sometimes like other teams like steal them. Sometimes they just like, are left out on the tables. We found them down in like the machine shop at some point. <laughs> um, so organization, honestly, is key because I've spent half an hour looking for drills, which is half an hour. I could be working on the car or doing literally anything else. <laughs> um, so I agree, organization is. What are your goals for this season? So for this season, we're really hoping to get a top 10 finish okay. overall. Top 10% to be exact. Um, yeah, that's what we're hoping for. All right, and what competition are you going to? So we'll be at Arizona, and we'll also be at Maryland. And I see that you were at Williamsport. We were at Williamsport last year, yeah. We did place first in business presentation. Okay. I'm very happy about that. Yeah. Are you ready for business presentations this year? Yeah, we're actually, we actually just finished practicing. All right. We're ready for our presentation virtual on Thursday. This is this year's car, correct? This is this year's car, yeah. This is what we'll be racing in Arizona in about a month. All right, and then what, is, what was all the work that got to this point right here? So this is what we like to call our rolling car. Mm -hmm. um, so everything from suspension to driver interface is uh, pretty much like finalized. Um, there's some small tweaks here and there to be done, but um, beyond that, that's what's on the car so far. So what's different about this car from, so, from other cars or last year's car? So I was last year's electronics lead. So I'm personally very proud of what my successor has done with this year's electronic system. It's much more robust in terms of data acquisition. Um, they're doing some really cool stuff with like telemetry, like live pushing of code. Um, we're having a more robust dashboard this year for the car, and it's kind of just overall a better system. And I'm really excited to see it actually get put into use, just because it's like been my baby the past couple years. And so it's insane to see it go from like a concept to a working system, and then watch that iterative design like kind of grow and grow each year. Okay, any different challenges with the new design? I would Thanks, say Mike. we just have a lot of different sub-teams all iterating with some pretty big design changes at the same time. So we're seeing new suspension parts, we're seeing redesigns for some of our DI stuff, we're seeing the new electronic system, we're seeing a completely shrunken chassis going like from a driver height of 5.6 to 5.3 on average. So it's just we like side out of the center shaft. It's kind of just all of these different changes coming in at once. And so we've been facing some challenges integrating so far, um, but we're working through them kind of day by day, getting through piece by piece. And it's, it's all coming together. I'm very excited. So this year, one of our main goals was to reduce the center of gravity. We had a lot of rollovers last year. Okay. Um, and we also wanted to cut quite a bit of weight. Uh, the biggest challenge with that, uh, we really wanted to shrink the form factor of the vehicle. So you can tell from last year's car, Mm -hmm. um, to this year's car, uh, there's quite a bit of shrinkage in almost all dimensions, height, width, and length. 
And the most difficult part about doing that is uh, integrating all of the subsystems together. So that was the most difficult part for us. So you're ready for less rollovers this year, hopefully. We are, we are hoping for less rollovers, yeah. <laughs> the ride height and the actual center of gravity has reduced a lot, um, so we're expecting less. But you never know with competition. <laughs> and are you a driver on the team? No, I'm not a driver. Oh, do you wish you were or no? Um, who wouldn't want to drive this car? It's <laughs> awesome. We do tend to let everyone drive, but the, I'm not the competition driver. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then where do you guys test? So we test um, a little up north near Pyramid Lake, a place called Gorman, which was where last year's competition oh, yeah. was. Yeah, that was home turf for us. Yeah, we test out there. Um, sometimes we go to um, other state parks around the area. Okay. Yeah, we try to get as much off-road terrain variation as possible. So have you done any testing yet or no? So on this car, not particularly. Um, typically, at this point in the cycle, most of the testing happens on the old car. OK. Um, and the testing for this car will start as soon as the car is completely running. What does make your team unique? The way we approach the design of the vehicle and like our design, um, I would say that electrically, we've got a lot more going on than most Baja teams. I don't know, you can, you can probably see all the harnessing that's gone on. This is about like a tenth of what will end up in the final car. And that's everything from like lots of data acquisition systems. Um, we run an eCBT, so this is a little, it's an electronic variant of the traditional CBT transmission. We love collecting all the data, making desi data-driven design choices. Um, so like last year at competition, we got about a gigabyte, um, 30 million lines of data from Endurance. Um, at Pennsylvania, and okay. a lot of that data has uh, driven design decisions this year. Awesome. Yeah. Who are your biggest competitors on site? The biggest competitors on site? Yeah. Um, we have a friendly rivalry with Slow, just okay. another SoCal team, and they yeah. also run an ECVT. Okay. Um, so we like to consider that a friendly rivalry. And beyond that, I mean, I don't think we've ever been like, these guys, we're out to get <laughs> them, you know? It's not really like that. Um, yeah, generally, we just look at where we are in the leaderboard and the surrounding field is kind of like our competition for Endurance Weekend. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it usually ends up. Hey, what's your favorite event at Baja? So my, my favorite Baja event, um, obviously Endurance. I think right. Endurance is awesome. It's the, like the pinnacle. It's the last part of the weekend. Um, but if I had to choose another dynamic event, it would definitely be uh, Rock Crawl. I okay. think Rock Crawl is always really awesome to see. Yeah. yeah. Especially the teams with the reverse gear. That's when that's that, that really comes into play in rock crawl. So that's it always does. awesome. I've actually never seen a sled pull. Really? So I just happened to go to all the competitions in the what? past that we did um, the hill at climb. the hill climb instead. Yeah. And so I've seen a bunch of hill climbs. The hill climb is super cool, but I've never seen a sled pull. So I'm excited to see some cars tip back because that's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> It has been a long-standing tradition. Top 10 equals uh, one of the directors gets a tattoo, so. Okay, because yeah. the... <laughs> there we go. Volunteer. Almost too eager for the tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> and then, do you guys do big, like, 12-hour build sessions as well? We do. Um, they may not be meticulously planned, um, but there <laughs> they are... They just happen? <laughs> they just happen, yeah. That, I feel like that's just how Baja goes a lot of the time. Last year, when we were really putting in work developing the ECVT, because last year was the first year that it ended up like fully working to a point that we were satisfied with it. Oh. We would do in the morning, get in at 9 a.m. and leave the next morning at 5 a.m. And we'd pull like that once, once a week. Okay. Um, so it was pretty brutal for a little while, but now we have like a, a running and working system. So we're hoping not to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that. So then how many hours do you normally spend in the workshop? So n now it's going to start kicking up. Because okay. competition's nearing. Yeah. Um, in that like one month span before competition, um, for UCLA, because we're on a quarter system, it's spring quarter. Mm -hmm. um, so during spring quarter, it, it can be anywhere from 20 hours a week to 60. Okay. Um, so we're in here quite a bit. Does your school work help you in the workshop, or does the work at the workshop help you more in your classwork? I think this is like, Amongst, if you ask different people on the team, they'll give you different answers. Okay. Um, but me personally, um, I think work in school is like adding tools to your toolbox, mm -hmm. and then where you actually get to use the tools is here. Okay. So it's interesting because I'm an electrical engineer, so a lot of the work that I, or a lot of the stuff that I learn about in the classroom is very commonly applied here, especially because we've got so much electronics going on in the car. Mm -hmm. um, and same thing for the mechanical engineers. Um, you put tools in your toolbox and you use them in Baja. Why did you join the team? So as a freshman coming into UCLA, I wanted to join an, a project team. 
in high school, I was on a robotics team and I wanted like that same camaraderie, that same experience. Because the practical experience I got out of it was really valuable to me. I also really liked racing in general. I got into Formula One and Rallycross at that time. Okay. And so obviously Rallycross is somewhat similar (laughs) to this. So that really drew me to Baja. And I also saw that they had a lot of electronics on the vehicle. Um, And at the time, Formula was still combustion. So I was like, I'm joining Baja. I want to do this data acquisition stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Why did you join the Baja team? Similar to Rama, kind of wanted a project to put a bunch of time into just because I was in FRC in high school for robotics. Um, I just really wanted to build something with kind of physical just because I'm a computer science engineering major. Okay. So I don't get a lot of like technical hands-on experience through my major. It's a lot more theory. It's a lot more coding, um, which is perfect. It's also very valuable, but I think I needed kind of to get my hands dirty a little bit. And Baja was the perfect place to do that. Yeah. Bottom mud. Awesome. <laughs> so you're going to Arizona and Maryland. Yes. Well, let's answer that question. For, which one are you more excited for? So I'm more excited for Maryland, just because it's a cross-country one. Okay. The cross-country ones tend to be like... Um, a smaller crew, so yeah. it's like you know, 10, 15 people, and the experience is a little different. I and driving across the country can be fun. Uh, how I mean, how long is a drive with a car with the Baja car? We were just looking at this. So in a regular car, it's going to be 40 hours. With the trailer, <laughs> it's anyone's guess. Uh, maybe 60 <laughs> around. It's going to be a lot more. So yeah. All right, and you're ready for it. I'm ready for it. Who's driving the trailer? I will be one. Okay. Um, and the rest we have to be determined. We're trying to get four total. Okay. And then who, how, how many are going out to Arizona? Arizona's going to be a big competition for us. So um, it's around 60. Okay. So we'll have a big crew at Arizona. And then what is next for you after graduation? Uh, so I'm currently making that decision. Okay. <laughs> so I've been doing the grad school versus industry debate recently. Right now we're leaning towards grad school. Okay. Um, so the, I'm super excited for that so, um, specialized program for control theory, which sounds really sick. Would you stay at UCLA or go somewhere else for grad school? Uh, I'm actually looking at London. <laughs> London? Okay, yeah. nice. So, um, Why London? Because um, Imperial College has one of the best programs for this specific like subset of electrical engineering. That's awesome. Next after Baja, um, I do want to do my master's here okay. um, at UCLA. And after my master's, I want to go into either um, aerospace or the automotive industry. I want to continue doing racing, mm-hmm. but careers in racing are few and far between. So we'll see where that road takes me. Well, once you get that top 10, <laughs> doors will be opening up for you. I hope so. I hope people come calling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then any crazy road stories? Last year, actually, we drove from here to Pennsylvania. On the way back, we had a bunch of seniors drive the trailer. Mm-hmm. It's like a little tradition. The seniors get a little road trip and they get to bring the trailer back to um, UCLA. <laughs> and so we drive through Pittsburgh and in Pittsburgh, um, we jump a curb and the trailer blows a tire. So we have to replace the tire in Pittsburgh. <laughs> um, and we're on our way back and we have a little running joke in the team um, of this little yellow chair that's been everywhere. It's, it's right behind there. So yeah, that chair has been everywhere. No one knows where the chair has been pulled from, but um, that chair has been in the Colorado River, um, Las Vegas, uh, Pittsburgh, all over the place. And there's pictures of like the seniors from like years and years prior all over the place. Yeah, so that's, that's uh, the electronic seniors on, in front of the St. Louis Arch. Yeah, this is, this is the chair right here, the Colorado River chair. Um, on our way back, they went through Las Vegas mm-hmm. and they had to stop in Las Vegas. And I heard that was a very harrowing experience for them because they booked a hotel in a pretty seedy part of town. <laughs> so they, they actually couldn't sleep in the hotel room. They had to sit outside the um, trailer with a, a little metal pipe to defend the trailer because people were trying to rob us. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> people were trying to break into the trailer. So um, yeah, they took shifts sleeping in the car with one guy sitting outside with a little metal pipe. <laughs> so that was uh, quite the experience coming back from uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's a that's a rough one. Yeah. <laughs> did, they, did they have to fight anybody? Or Thankfully was... not. Okay. Um, they good. got they got a little tip off from the security guard at the hotel that they should change hotels to a different part of town, <laughs> yeah. and so they swapped later in the night. 
Good. Last year before California Comp, we're relatively nearby, only an hour away from Gorman. Mm -hmm. So we packed up and moved out the day before okay. uh, to Gorman. And um, at the time, I was a project engineer and I was designing the electronic system. So it wasn't really quite tuned for competition yet. So we were tuning it um, at like two in the morning. And the managing directors had told us the night before that they would be here with the Penske or be here to pick up the Penske at three or four in the morning. And they wanted us to load up the car into it once we were done. Yeah. So we load up the car and it's three in the morning and we're like, wait, they're gonna be here in an hour. What if we just wait for them and, and scare them in the trailer? <laughs> so we had a, a group of like eight people sleeping in the, the, pe the back of the Penske the night before comp. And the directors come in, they open the trailer and we're all just like knocked out and two of us are awake enough to like scare them. And he, he just looks so done. because He's also been up late and he opens the trailer and he's like, you guys forgot to strap the car in. And I was like, oh, that's a little bit of an oversight. Um, so we got the car strapped in for them and then we moved out. But that was a little, a little fun story from last year. There's a little picture of all of us sitting in the trailer after we scared them. Yeah. And we're all joyous and the direct... They're, they're not joyous. <laughs> yeah, they're like, we got to drive this truck at five in the morning. So we have a famous staircase up here uh, called Jan Steps. Mm -hmm. And it basically leads up to like that iconic UCLA picture of Royce Hall that you see every time you search up UCLA. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge flight of stairs. And last year after graduation photos, the seniors, I guess they just thought they had nothing to lose. So they were like, hey, what if we push the car down the staircase? So they pushed the car down the staircase with nobody in the car. <laughs> and, and somehow it goes perfectly fine. The car stays straight. And um, so, yeah, that's one thing. And another, like, competition-related thing was on one of our first um, ECBT cars, uh, one of the programmers of the car thought it would be really funny the night before competition to push, like, new code to the car that would basically just flash the error LED randomly. So, like, we were at competition, and we see the error LED flashing, and we start freaking out because it was working perfectly fine the night before. Yeah. And we're sitting there debugging this, like, error LED, trying to find the error for, like, an hour. And then he shows up from his break, and he's like, oh, that, that's really funny. I added that last night. It just blinks randomly. <laughs> and so we're, like, we're, like, jiggling wires trying to figure it out. And we're like, oh, it's blinking whenever you shake this wire. It must be loose. But he comes up, and he's like, yeah, no, I just programmed it to flash, like, randomly. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot there are a lot of pranks. We love our, our pranks on Baja. I like it. So. Now, now you just make me feel bad. Um, yeah, that's a problem. So. <laughs>